If you're on the lookout for a great new show to help teach you about business, check out The Hustle Daily Show, brought to you by the HubSpot Podcast Network, the audio destination for business builders. The Hustle Daily Show is your daily dose of business, tech, news, and original stories to keep you in the loop on what's trending in business. Just like here, it's a daily podcast on which their team of writers break down the biggest business headlines in 10 minutes or less and explain why you should care about them. They'll also do deep dives on topics like a man who won the lottery 14 times and why it's nearly impossible to buy an original Bob Ross painting. I checked out a few episodes of The Hustle Daily Show and to me, it was quick, educational, and feels like the perfect show to pair with OWD. So search for The Hustle Daily Show in your favorite podcast app, like the one you're using right now. You'll be glad you did. I'm Jason Palmer, one of the hosts of The Intelligence, The Economist's daily current affairs podcast. The Economist's award-winning shows make sense of what matters, from our special series on China's president to our weekly podcasts on business, technology, and American politics, our journalists provide fair, in-depth reporting on the events shaping the world. To get the annual plan for less than $2.50 per month, search for Economist Podcasts Plus to start listening today. This is Optimal Work Daily, episode 1224, I Quit My Job and I'm Not Crazy, by Nicole Olette with BudgetsAreSexy.com. And I'm Dan, your host here, and welcome to this edition of Optimal Work Daily, where I read to you from the very best blogs that cover work and productivity and a lot more. So now let's hear from Budgets Are Sexy and Optimize Your Life. I Quit My Job and I'm Not Crazy by Nicole Olette with BudgetsAreSexy.com. When I quit my full-time job with health insurance a few weeks ago, more than one person thought I was insane. Of course, they never actually said that. Wow, you're gutsy, I'll give you that. How is un, I mean, self-employment going? Your father is probably rolling over in his grave. To be fair, mom followed up that comment with lots of support. Still, I know she's right. My father would have never approved of this. Then there are the people who think I sit around all day eating bonbons and flitting around my apartment in a bathrobe. Man, if someone would pay me to do that, that would rock. Aside, it's hard to flit in 220 square feet of space shared with a dog. I'm here to tell you the truth, friends, the truth of quitting your job and going it alone. One, plan like heck. No matter what, you still will not have planned enough, but plan as much as you can. Who are your clients? How much do you have to charge to pay your life? In my case, not every hour I spend is billable, so I planned 15 to 20 billable hours a week when I calculated my prices. Make a business plan, which you will probably hate doing, but in the end, it may save your butt. Two, have some money to back it up. I've been saving money and living frugally for almost two years. In addition, my father died and left me some money, which gives me more of a cushion than the average 28-year-old has the luxury of having. For the record, I would give up this entire business in about one millisecond to have him alive again. So start saving now, and with your business plan and nest egg, you can probably get yourself a small business loan, whether it be from people you know or a bank. I'm getting my stuff ready in case I want to do this at the end of the summer. Also, be prepared to transition money-wise if need be. Right now, I'm working a part-time job this summer to keep paying my rent and food as I ramp up my full-time workload. My savings are only to be used if completely, utterly necessary. Three, I won't lie, it does rock in a lot of ways. On a roll at five o'clock, sometimes I work until 11 at night. Lunch with a friend, it can happen. A flexible schedule is fantastic and something I've always wanted. Four, but I've never been so worried in my life. I'm a super laid-back lady to the point of almost being annoying, but lately I've been having nightmares, worrying, and crying way more than usual. Doing this is scary because there's no guarantees that it's going to work. And while I will try not to take failure personally, I'm sure I will on some level if it comes down to that. Five. Oh, and I'm totally operating in the negative. I did some math last week and freaked out. I know there's bound to be some ebbs and flows in the business, but I guess naively, I thought I'd be different. Good news is, those two years I lived below the federal poverty line a while back may have been some good training for me in the months to come. And six, if you don't believe in it, no one else will. Is it hard to get up every morning and be ready to sell, sell, sell? 
Is it weird to do something my now dead father, whom I held in very high esteem, would completely hate? It sure is. But I'll tell you that the only person who needs to believe in it in their heart of hearts is you. If you can believe it, it will translate. You know, unless you have mental delusions or something. So before you quit your job, really dig down deep and ask yourself, can I really do this? The answer may be more obvious than you think. It's you who will have to work 12 hours a day or make personal sacrifices to free up business cash. No one's going to hold your hand or make you get up at seven every morning. It's all you, for better or for worse. Know thyself, know thy customer, and know that no matter what, you can reinvent yourself whenever you want with a little planning and a lot of hard work. You just listened to the post titled, I Quit My Job and I'm Not Crazy by Nicole Olette of BudgetsAreSexy.com. And thank you both to Nicole, who is the author of this post and a guest writer at Budgets Are Sexy, and the site's creator, Jay Money. Now, we've been fortunate enough to meet Jay at some conferences in the past, and he's a really great guy, a lot of fun to be around. And he typically writes about personal finance, so you can hear his content being narrated over on Optimal Finance Daily regularly, but occasionally he touches on business too. So, He started Budgets Are Sexy way back in February 2008 as a way of tracking his journey of hitting a million dollars in net worth. And after 11 years of budgeting, saving, learning how to invest, and making a bunch of mistakes along the way, he reached that goal and millions of readers were following along. So come by BudgetsAreSexy.com for a lot more and also check out the other podcast I mentioned, Optimal Finance Daily, to hear more from Jay Money. So that's gonna do it for today. I hope you enjoyed the post and that you'll be back again with me tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.